Somebody just give the worship in this room. Somebody just find the fire in this room. Somebody give the worship in this room. Somebody give the worship in this room. Somebody bless his name. Somebody just bless his name.
may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Good morning, great faith. Good morning. And to our followers on Facebook and YouTube, good morning to you too. This is Dr. Daisy Winder, the senior pastor of Great Faith Ministries. We thank you for tuning in this morning and we pray because of worship that you are already blessed. As you continue to stay tuned, the Lord truly has a blessing for you. Amen, people? Amen. amen and amen. Thank you all this morning. Is everybody in the house okay this morning? Yes. Amen. Everybody healthy and well? Yes. yes. My God, God is good. Amen? Amen. amen. And he is worthy to be praised. He is gracious. How many of you know he's gracious? Yeah. He graces us with life this morning. Amen? amen? He graces us with life this morning. Now this morning, you know, I, I like to go straight into the word, but I want to make a, an announcement this morning. Just one of our singers, Deontay Bethel, and one of our good sister Lydia has lost, Deontay has lost her father on Thursday, and Lydia is the sister-in-law of Deontay's father, and so we have to take out this time to let her know that we love them, and all the Bethel families and the, the Marshalls, we love you all. And Amen. I want you to know that we love you and you will remain in our prayers. Our sincere condolences goes out from us, the family of great faith. Continue to be strong. God is with you. Amen? Amen, amen. amen and amen. And so people of God, you know, she's, she's had a dad that night, right? The next day, Wednesday. Thursday. He died Thursday morning. He was with them on Wednesday. And he was gone on Thursday. My God, Nobody my God. knew. Nobody knew that he would not be here today. Right. And so... People of God, let's stay ready. We know not the hour. Yeah. We don't know. People said Jesus been saying he was coming for over 2,000 years ago and he hasn't reached yet. But how many of you know it? every time somebody leaves every the earth, Jesus came? Yeah. Amen. Am I right about that? Yeah. So every day. And so let's remain in prayer. Let's keep our hearts in tune with God. Amen. Amen, amen. amen and amen. I want you to look with me for a few minutes in the book of Matthew, chapter 9. I want to read from verses 35 to 38. I want to teach this morning on evangelism, Jesus' way. Evangelism, Jesus' way. Now, Jesus taught his disciples complete evangelism. Let's go to the text and read the text first. Matthew 9, verses 35 through 38. And Jesus went about all about the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted, and was scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then said he, Jesus, unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore for the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Father, once again, we give you thanks and we honor you this morning. We thank you for this awesome opportunity that we are here today and we can look at your word and see the wonderful plans that you have for our lives. Bless us now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Jesus taught his disciples complete evangelism. His followers in the early church knew of them and practiced them. Jesus described this complete evangelism when he outlined his plan for the church in Matthew 9. The disciples listened closely to his words in their lifetime, saw the church that he talked to grew. 
They listened, and what happened else? The church what? Grew. Grew. And so this morning, I want us to look at what Jesus taught his disciples on how to bring souls into the kingdom of God. You know, in the scripture, he says, I will make you, he told his disciples, I will make you fishers of men. I'm going to teach you how to do what? Catch men. And people of God, we talk about how to grow the ministry. And so, we're teaching this message today. We will know, we're going to lay down the foundation of how we are to go out there and build the kingdom of God through evangelism. Amen. Amen. We want to thank God for the prayer meeting that we had on Tuesday. It was truly a blessing. We are praying for destiny helpers. We are praying that God would send them into the ministry. Amen. Amen. I was talking to another pastor and he was telling me, he said, just about every church after two years of being home, people don't want to go back to church, but we got to get them back into church so we could hear the word of God. Amen. And so this morning in our text, we read it already. In this passage of scripture, Jesus is on a mission. As he looked over the people, what he saw, he had gathered around them. And what he said he saw, he saw a lot of stuff going on. He gathered around them because of the miracles. He became sorrowful and he yeah. looked at the helpless, yeah. hopeless, hurting people. He had compassion on them. Amen. My God. I pray today, people, that we would have enough compassion when we look out into the harvest. Jesus said it's right, but it's, it's plenty. Yes. But the labors are few. I pray today as great faith ministry, look out in the world, see the hopeless, hurting people, that we will have compassion on them right. and we will be able to tell them that there is a better way. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so we want to, you know, we're going to have shouting time, but we need to know how to go out there. And a lot of you know how to go out there, but sometimes we get a little lazy and, and laid back and we don't go and do what God has sent us to do. But I want to do a refresh course on how we ought to go out there and get the people. Amen? Amen. We want to talk about the mission of Jesus. Now let's see how what? An assignment. How many of you know that being a witness is an important on a mission? What? He was on an assignment to bring in what? Law, souls into the kingdom. Now the mission of Jesus is threefold. And I want to point out those three things this morning. Three mission of Jesus that believers should know. Three mission that we should know to bring in the harvest. Amen? Amen. Now Matthew 9, 35 through 38. Number one, let's look at verse 35. And it says, And Jesus went all about the city and the village, teaching in their synagogue and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. The number one mission of Jesus was to minister. To minister is to attend to the need of someone. Let me say we are ministers, and all of us are ministers. You remember, I was teaching that the other day. Amen. I say, who's minister? All of us are Amen. ministers, Amen. and all of us have to attend to the needs of the people. Amen? Amen? Now, three things are covered about Jesus' ministry in this verse. A. Stay there with me now. Matthew 9. You're going to look at verse 35. I'm teaching this morning. It says, And Jesus went. Somebody say went. Went. All about the cities and the village. Villages. A. Jesus' method is to go. Y'all see it? And Jesus went. Amen. Jesus went all about the cities and the villages. Jesus had but one method in reaching people to accomplish what he set out to do. He went out after the people. Come on, people. 
He did not sit back and wait for people to come to him. And if we as believers want to accomplish what Jesus has set us, set us to, is we have to do what Jesus did. We have to what? Go after the people. Come on now. Imagine this. I might hardly see in these days and time. And I think the reason why, now that's my philosophy, I think the reason why that Jesus locked the churches down for almost two years is for us to get out there. That's right. <laughs> That's true. That's right. Come on now. Because we just sit in the church, in the four walls of the church, and all who in the church is always already saved. I see. Already know Jesus. We are teaching the people who already know Jesus. People, we got to go fishing. Yeah. We got to do what Jesus says. He said, what? The method that he used to bring in souls. He said, we ought to what? Go. That's the word to the day. Tell somebody, go. Go. We got to go. Amen. That's the method what Jesus did. Did you see it in the word? He said, we ought to what? Go after. Jesus said, we ought to go. And Luke 10, 9, 10, you don't have to turn there. 9, 10, he said, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save them that is lost. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. We cannot no longer sit down, people. We can't sit down. We got to do like Jesus said. He said, we ought to go. He said, he come to seek. And that's the reason why he said in the word, he said, seek, and we shall find. Amen? But if we ain't seeking souls, we're not going to find souls. Am I right about that? Right. And so we have to go out and we have to bring the lost souls into the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Now listen, Matthew 28, 19, if you want to go there, you can look there, but keep your finger on our text, Matthew 9. And it says... Matthew 28, 19, 20 says what? The first word is what? Go. Come on, people. The first word is what? Go. 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 We ought to sit down in these seats and be comfortable. We ought to what? Go. And we're going to start an evangelism. We're going to go out on the streets wherever we need to go and bring souls into the kingdom. We are not... We're not looking to say to fill up the seats. We want to fill these seats up. We need destiny help us. But we want to make sure we get these people to get saved, that they can go to a church where they can get the word of God. They can be fed and become what stronger and stronger in God. But we have to what? Go. Go. Now, verse 19 says, go ye therefore. This is what Jesus, this is, this is the commission what he gave us people. He said, go ye therefore and teach all nations. Oh baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. He said, teaching them to observe, to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always. always. You know what I love about that? He sent us. He said, go, but he didn't leave us. He said, go. Because a lot of us a lot of believers is afraid to go. But what Jesus said, he encouraged us to go. He said, lo. <laughs> he said, lo, I am with you always. I ain't going to leave you. You think if you go in the ghetto, Jesus will leave you because you're there? He said, go. Amen? Amen. And the man that he used for the church is for us to go after the people. Amen? We are to go after the people. The first mission of Jesus' ministry was the method is what? To go. To go. For us to go be. And Jesus went about, come on verse 35. And Jesus went all about the cities and villages. What? Teaching, Teaching in their synagogue. And preaching. Amen. Be Jesus' place of ministry. That's the second one. Read that again. Verse 35. And Jesus went all about the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogue. Jesus went 
everywhere, people. He ran into synagogues to do ministry. He ran into villages, to cities, to mountains. He ran by the seashore. He ran in the boat. He ran by the graveyard. My God, Jesus, the place Jesus said we ought to go is where? Everywhere. We can't say we ain't good. Now, don't, if, you, if, you, if you just drink rum, don't go to the bar. Let, let somebody who don't drink rum go to the bar. Amen. Amen. But Jesus said that we ought to do what? Go everywhere. everywhere. Come on, people. Y'all see that? Come on, read that again. Jesus went all about the cities and villages, teaching in the synagogue. And what? Preaching. Preaching. The gospel. He went everywhere. He went in homes. Remember, he was in a home when, when the, the, the four men brought <laughs> Jesus. You, you, you see evangelism. The four men brought a man, lift him up, rip off the ceiling, and let the man into Jesus. My God. That's what's compassion. When you can take the time to break something down, not for you, but for somebody else. Because that's all a lot of us do. We break down for us, but when it comes for somebody else, we be like, man, I ain't checking for that. Even with the ministries in the church, people, certain people would be assigned to certain ministries, but because some of the believers don't want to see the success of it, they wouldn't show up. Am I right about that now? Yes. Am I preaching, people? Amen. We as one, we have to come together, and we have to do what God has called us to do. Now, if you can't make it to some of the, 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 the things that are in, in the church, then that's fine. But I've known times when when you have Sunday school. They'll have somebody in charge of the Sunday school, but because that person is in charge of the Sunday school, some people don't want to come. Come on, y'all been in church all your life. Y'all know that, right? Yes. Huh? Because some people are in charge of, of whatever area, people don't want to come. But people, we got to go out there and we got to do, if, if it's been in the Sunday school, you bring them in. If it's been in the, the music ministry, bring them in. If it's been in the prayer meeting, bring them in. Amen. Not only just in your area, in all of the areas in the ministry. Amen. Jesus said we ought to go everywhere. What? In the synagogue, everywhere on the job. Jesus, when the last time we tell somebody on the job, Jesus saves. Every day. In the office sitting down. But would not be a witness for Jesus. Jesus said everywhere people, no place is except where we should talk about Jesus. Amen. He should be on our lips every minute of the yeah. day. When somebody walk in, Tell them about Jesus. I know I got one cousin from she was a, a teenager. She don't care. She come in your shop, she meets somebody, and then you'll be like, my God. You know the people that are trying to buy a flower. She said, Do you know Jesus? Hmm? Amen. Amen. She she laughs. I know she used to work for me one time. You know I talk about uh, one of our cousins. And she never opened that shop to the public until she knelt down and she prayed. Tracy, that's her name. Oh, yeah. She prayed and trust me, everywhere she go, that woman talk about the first thing she asked them, are you saved? Do you know Jesus? And then you know you, like I said, you try to do business and you would be like, man, you're not right now. You're trying to make some money, you know? But this woman, she didn't care about that. Like Jesus said, he said, go everywhere. Don't care where it is, wherever you come in contact with somebody. Tell them about Jesus and his love and he will save them. Amen? Amen. 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 Verse 35. But we're talking about the, the, the ministry of Christ. Amen. The first one is for him to go, for us to go. And the second one, A, B, is we are to go where? Everywhere to teach the word. Amen. C. Now, this is only out of this one verse. We're going to read that again. And Jesus went all about the cities and village. You write back in verse 35. Teaching. Teaching in their synagogue and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing. 
Every sickness. Every sickness. He was what? Healing what? Every sickness. Every sickness. See, Jesus work of his ministry. He was teaching, preaching, and doing what? We preach, we teach. <laughs> how many of us healing? How many, how many pastors? Come, let me lay hands on you. And you see manifestation. That's right. Everywhere Jesus went and preached, he said he healed by God people. We got to get to that place in Jesus where we get so deep and, and we get so much of him that when we lay hands on the sick, and that's why when I lay hands on the sick, I don't even call you and ask if you heal because I believe you're healed because I'm teaching and preaching and healing like Jesus. Amen. And I don't, I don't want you to call there and say, I say as Jesus. I did not say as Jesus. I said I don't it like Jesus. You know why I don't it like Jesus? Because I got the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The same spirit that was yeah. in Jesus is locked up in me. My Bible tells me, he said, I will put my spirit within you. What is that spirit? The Holy Spirit. And he gave us, he said, I give you all that same power that is in me. I give you that same power to lay hands on the sick and they shall. Yes. We can't have to teach the days, but just teaching and preaching and nothing else happening is over. Something got to happen to bring to people in so that they can believe that Jesus is who he says he is. Amen? Now listen, before y'all get me wrong, miracles are for the unbelievers. We already know who Jesus is. But in order to get the unbelievers to come, sometimes they got to see us lay hands on the dead and they rise up and they say, you got to be a God. Come on, people. And that's who the miracles are for? Yes. And what, what, what are they coming for? If all we can tell them is okay, it's offering time. Hmm? Yeah, people are into that. They wants to know when I come in here and I can hear that the pastor or, or one of the members or whoever have the anointing on them could pray for them and they as their ears will pop open and Amen. they will hear. Yes. Am I right about that, yes. people? So Jesus wasn't just about teaching. He was about preaching the word of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was about teaching and preaching, but he was also about healing the sick, every disease. Jesus, Lord, he cast out demons. <laughs> People sometimes, as a woman of God, I say, God, I can tell you all this, I don't want you all to be offended. And I'm not talking to great faith, I'm talking to the entire body of the people who say that they are the body of Christ. Sometimes, I just say, God, is these Bahamian people really safe? Come on, none of y'all ever thought that sometimes? Yes. Come on, the way how they carry on, the way how they act, the way how they don't have no compassion, the way how they hate, the way how they are jealous. I said, God, are these people really safe? Jesus said he looked on the multitude. He saw they was in distress and he had compassion on them. And then we see the people. We can't just think about ourselves. We got to think about what God has called us to do. Jesus is teaching us this morning, people. That we ought to have compassion in every day of my life, every day. I'm trying to get closer, closer, and closer to Jesus. I don't know about you, but you cannot just be that mediocre, just the same old thing all the time, something different that happens. That's why I tell Great Faith Ministry the time for not having two years now we've been in the pandemic, we need to get back the prayer meeting because nothing is going to happen if we don't pray. My God. That's how we get connected with God. We got to pray. Yeah. That's how something is going to happen. We got to pray. Yeah. We pray in the house by ourselves, but my Bible tells me where two or three are gathered together. He is in the midst, people. My God. 
He's with you when you pray, but he said, you know, one can chase a thousand, but what, two can chase ten. And he said, the only power, people, that we have is when we touch and agree. Amen. We don't have no other power, people of God. If we don't touch and agree, if we don't declare a thing and somebody is there and say, amen, it will never happen. My God. He said, if you touch and agree in anything, my God, he said, it shall be done for you. That's right. So we got to come together. We got to come together. We got to pray together. We, we got to come in agreement. And that's the reason why the church is always divided. Because the devil don't want us to come into agreement. Because he knows if we come into agreement, some great things will happen. We got to come in agreement. Amen? My God. And that's what it's all about. Threefold. Teaching, preaching, and healing. That's right. Threefold work of the ministry serve as a primary guide of the believers in Christ. Jesus taught all who would receive this message in 2 Timothy 2 and 2. Paul admonished Timothy to teach. This is what he said. He said, thus therefore my son, be strong in the grace that is in Jesus Christ. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. We are called to teach. Amen? We are called to preach. But we are also called to do what? Come on, people. We are also called to do what? To heal. Okay? Jesus never intended for ministry to be done alone. We are not to do it by ourselves. Amen? Amen. Amen. Jesus has commissioned every believer, and he expects every believer to be about the business of reaching and helping people. Teaching and preaching is a need as well as healing. Jesus' method of his ministry is to go, A, B, to go what? B, Jesus' place is to go where? Everywhere. Everywhere. Jesus' work of his ministry is to do what? To teach, teach to preach, and to heal. Amen? Yeah. We talk about three mission of Jesus that believers shall follow. That's the first one. A, B, and C. Now the second mission of Jesus believers are to, sh are to follow is in verse 36. Matthew 9, 36. I won't keep you long. Matthew 9 verse 36. I tell you I want to point out three. Okay? That was all in the first one. Matthew 9, 36 said, But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and was scattered abroad as sheep have no shepherd. I can hear you all. You all know, yeah? Amen. I want this word sink in you and, and, and come alive. Amen. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they faded and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. The second mission of Jesus was to show compassion to define compassion, we talk about compassion, is to yearn with tender mercy, to be moved inwardly, to have pity or concern for those who are in need. Now Jesus was moved on compassion because what the people faded and they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Now, <clears throat> those who were following him, what he said, he said, he said they, they were in the villages, in the cities, in the countryside, in the synagogue, on the mountain by the graveyard. But when he saw the state that they were in, he was moved with compassion. Now two areas in the people life that Jesus saw and had compassion of this number two. A, Jesus was moved over the physical need of the people. They fainted. They were weighed down and ready to collapse. They were empty without purpose. They were scattered. They were lost. They were wounded. How many of you know today that's exactly what's out there today? What happened when Jesus, in Jesus' days, ain't nothing changed? When he looked and he saw the condition that the people was in, when we look, we see these same things. Come on, am I right about that? Yeah. The people lost, they wounded, they hurting. Huh? But we have compassion. He saw their hunger, he saw their pain, he saw their suffering, and he had compassion. People, when Jesus saw it, he had compassion, and we also, we ought to have compassion. Amen? For That's the right. people. That's right. The people were weighed down 
and Jesus had compassion on them. Now be right in that same verse, 36. They were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Amen. Jesus was moved over. First, what he was moved over was the what? Physical, right? Our needs, our physical needs. And then he was moved over our spiritual needs. How many of you know when it comes to Jesus, he don't just focus on, on the spiritual? Because sometimes when we, when we get saved, that's all we focus on, spiritual. We don't focus on what, what you need, what the people need physically. Huh? We just focus on what spiritual needs yeah. of the people. But Jesus had balance here. He said physically and spiritually. Jesus saw the crowd as sheep. They were astray without a shepherd. This multitude of people was wandering around like sheep without a shepherd. Jeremiah 56 says, My people have been lost sheep, and their shepherd has chased them to go astray. And they have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from the mountain to the hills. They have forgotten their resting place. What Jesus is saying, and we see it in here today, people, the spiritual need of the people. What Jesus is saying, <laughs> oh my God. What Jesus is saying here, he said, the people are out there like lost sheep. Nobody to steer them in the right direction. Nobody ought to tell them that's not the right way, that's the wrong way. He, he had compassion because he said spiritually, these people were spiritually dead. They were lost. Anybody ever see sheep when they don't know where they're going? Everything pumped up, pumped up. Anybody ever see sheep on a movie? Yeah. Huh? All pumped up together. He said they're like lost sheep. But when they have a shepherd, how many of you know they're on the line and they're following the, sh the shepherd? Am I right about that? That's right. And he leading them to greener pasture. But when they don't have a shepherd, my God, my God, he said they're like lost sheep, my God. He said these people need spiritual help, pastors. We need to get out there and lead these people. Instead of just giving a good, sweet word, we ought to tell them, listen, you're going the wrong way. That's right. They need to straighten up. Let God use you. Yes. Yes. But you know, sometimes as pastors, we compromise. Yes. We get in the pulpit, and because we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, we tell them it's okay, pastors, we're losing them, we're losing them. They're dying and going to a Christless hell. We got to preach the truth. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life right. to our Lord and Savior Jesus. Right. He said they are like lost sheep. My God, without a shepherd. Can't you see it? Can't you see what's happening in the world today? Why would Jesus say that? They had synagogues. They had churches back in the day. But why would Jesus say that? Because he see that he saw that spiritually these people had no Ministers, people, all of us are ministers. We got to give these people hope. Amen. We got to tell them, our children, what is right from what is wrong. Amen? That's right. We have to tell them, these people who are spiritually dead, they had no leaders who had the courage to tell them the truth and how to live by it. They had no one to tell them that there is hope in God. They had no one to tell them that God can fix any situation. Whatever they were going through, somebody, a shepherd ought to tell them, God can fix any situation. We know that when you have a big church, other people are assigned, but whoever is assigned, those persons need to be able to go to that person and they ought to be able to encourage them and tell them, my brother, my sister, everything is going to be all right. God can fix it. There's nothing too big for him and there's nothing too small for him. He will fix every situation. Am I right about that? Yes. Amen. Spiritually, physically, Jesus looked upon the people that he saw that they need physical needs and they needed a spiritual need. Amen? Amen. Three mission of Jesus that believers should follow. One is what? To go. The second one is to do what? 
go to the place, go everywhere. Go everywhere. Amen. To go everywhere. Verse 9, we close it now. Matthew 9, verse 37 and 38, and it says, Then said he, come on, we in Matthew 9, Then said he unto his people, The harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. I hope everybody listening and nobody's sleeping. Amen? Amen. Amen. They say when they're quiet, don't say nothing, they're listening. Amen? Then said he unto his disciples, the harvest, come on people, is truly what? But what happened to the neighbors? The neighbors of you. The neighbors of you. Who in the vineyard? Who in the vineyard? What are we bringing? Are we bringing in souls to the kingdom? Oh, we just want to build big churches. We just want your money. Hmm? I don't care what kind of life you live in. Just bring me your money. How many of you know the sheep is there for the for the pastors? Okay? The sheep are there. You know what you do with sheep? Eat them, right? Yep. But then you got to feed the sheep. Because of what? The sheep feeding you. Am I right about that? Right. But when we people, what Jesus is saying is, the harvest is plenteous. The souls of there are plenteous. Lazy. <laughs> These Christians lazy, you know. When I was a young girl, I used to hear about Christians going to Africa with just their clothes. That's true. And I used to hear people that when they go, they used to carry something for the people. Oh, I know we all ever hear that. Yeah. But when we go now, we're looking for something from the people. Oh Come on now. Anybody remember they used to, to collect up stuff and say, I'm going to Africa. We want to take some stuff with us. Amen. But now we go with our good, beautiful suit on and our weave so we can hit it back sometimes and, and then when we come back we want to say um boy they sure bless me my god hmm? people that ain't what it's all about i know a lot of y'all say pastor pastor and he's saying that listen if i don't have a dollar i'd still say that that's right because i know if i do what god tell me to do he says seek him first and his righteousness and he said everything else will be added so I know if I do what he says, do. That's the reason why you'll never hear me say, bring me a hundred, bring me ten, bring me. I said you give freely, and if you want a blessing, we build in the ministry with it, you'll do what you're supposed to do. I, I teach it once in a while to let you know to give your tithes and your offering, and, and that's it. Okay? And so, you know, we, 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 we need people to go out. That's our first um, thing with Jesus tells us everywhere. That's the second one. And we need to bring in harvest of soul because the Bible says that it is plenty of something. You go to the club, <laughs> you can't find space. Some of the people outside. But you come into the church. Yeah. Hmm? Come on. Even the big churches now, the people that just keep falling away. Well, the Bible talk about apostrophe, the falling away of the church in the last days. He said there'll be a great falling away. People don't want no, they don't want God. But we have to do what God says that we ought to do. Amen. Amen. He said in verse 38, he said, Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into the vineyard. What did he tell us to do? Pray. 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 People, the only way, and I tell you that just now, the only way that we can win souls for Christ, we got to what? Pray. Pray. Every time you get on your knees, say, Lord of the harvest, send forth laborers in your vineyard. Send us people with, with, with a heart to help, not, not, not just to take from the people, but but a heart to give to the people. To, to share his word with them. To let them know that there is hope in Jesus. That, you know, sometimes we, we get so caught up in, in, in the worldly stuff that, like I say, the souls doesn't matter. But people, the souls, I don't, have, I don't, 
I don't just have y'all here sitting in here for what y'all could bring. I have y'all sitting in here so you can get deeper and deeper in Christ. That's why I love to teach. Amen? Amen. And so we have to what? Bring souls into the kingdom. Amen. The truly, truly the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. There are fields and fields of people growing in the body and hills of the world. Jesus said they are ripe and ready to be harvest. This harvest of souls. Let me tell you something. We have lost some generation. How many of you know that? Amen. I'm in a generation. You in a generation. Every one of us in a generation. Do you know that we are responsible for our generation? Do you know that? You're responsible for your generation. I'm responsible for my generation. So what Jesus is telling us is that we ought to what teach our generation. I'm here to pour into everybody else so that they can teach their generation. Amen. Unless the degree, we don't, we don't lose a lot of young people. We're going to lose a lot of young people. And churches are... One time ago, we used to have Sunday school. We haven't started Sunday school in great faith because we don't have children like that. But one time, churches used to have Sunday school. But a lot of churches, you know what? They cut it out and they say, let's have a morning, early morning service, more offering. I'm not going to church. But we can't just think about having a service. Yes, some people need to come to this one and some people need, but we can't take out Sunday school. Sunday school is the bed rock of the church. If our children don't get that foundation, if they don't get that, they will never grow to be the man and woman that God has called them to be. They need to be taught the word of God. And I always tell people, if we don't teach these children the Ten Commandments, Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery. If we used to teach that, it wouldn't be so much in the church. Oh my God. Hmm? The children, they'll come up and they're just killing one another. Why? Because the parents home and the children home. And then when the children begin to shoot up everybody, they go, ah, ah. You ain't never do what God tell you to do. He said, bring them up in the admonition and in the fear of God. That's what we got to do, people. Don't allow your child to stay home. Bring your child to church. Oh my God. What they doing home sleeping in here? And you talking about you was one of the ministers in the church. You need to get your house straight first. Amen. Joshua said, for me at my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen? Amen. So if you're out here, if you're listening to me and you're in church and your child home, you need to get that child and take him to church. Oh my God. Start with your house first. You can't be out there. We can't be out there trying to bring out. And I tell my children that. I say, I don't want to see the other people children going to heaven and my children going to hell. I got to get my house first. Am I right about that? And so people of God, this might be a little hard today, but we have to get it together. We have to make sure our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, we need to make sure that we are gatekeepers. We are watching over their souls. Am I right about that? Yes. And so Jesus is telling us to go out there, go everywhere. The first commandment, he says, we ought to go. We ought to go everywhere, preaching everywhere. and teaching yes. and healing. We ought to do ministry, people. This time for just playing church and worrying about this and worrying about what color shoes you can wear and what color hat. Man, I don't even be checking for that. You know what I mean? Some people got to put on all kind of paint and think, I love you looking beautiful. But I ain't checking for that. I try to get souls in the kingdom. I admire people. I admire women when they in the pulpit and they could, you know, I admire that. They're beautiful and they, that, that's who we are. We ought to be beautiful. But sometimes when we get so much of that, we ain't focused. You see, I've been to a church, I close it right now, and this woman came to preach every minute like every minute she knocking her hair back and knocking and you know I was like now what happened is she just lost the crowd because now they focusing on her hair they're gonna look down at her shoes they're gonna look down at everything 
people of God, we're going to go looking smart, I believe, and looking smart and looking good. We're going to do that, but don't let's lose focus on what God sent us to do. Amen? So, I don't know if you get anything out of the message. Some of the persons just reached the church. <laughs> but I'm sure on the next Sunday, they're going to come for nine. I appreciate you. I don't know what happened, but I don't care what time you reach your hip. Amen? Come on, people. I'm here to turn around. I'm just glad to see you. <laughs> Amen. And so we want to give God thanks for the words at the end to all of you who took the time out to come to church this morning. And so if you're watching today, and you're out there today, and number one, we, we witnessing to you today. We bringing in souls. We using the method of going everywhere. And if you're in your home, we coming in your home. <laughs> Am I right that people about that people? If you're in your home, in your kitchen, in your dining room. Jesus said that we ought to go everywhere. So if you're in the kitchen, we come to you. We talking to you. If you don't know Jesus in a personal way, this is your day. You could receive him as your personal savior. And then you could go out and be a witness for him. Amen, people? Yeah. So if you're out there today and you want to notice Jesus, I want you to pray with me. And to all of you who are here, Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. I recognize, I recognize that I'm a sinner, that I'm a sinner. and I need a savior. And I need a savior. Satan, Satan, I denounce you. I denounce you. Get out of my life. Get out of my life. Jesus, Jesus, I open my heart to you. I open my heart to you. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Jesus. Jesus, come into my heart today. Come, come into my heart today. Come in to stay. Come in to stay. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus thank, you thank you for saving my soul saving my and soul. making me whole. Making me in, whole. Jesus name. in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you amen. said that prayer today, welcome to the family of God. Come on, people of God, put your hands together and give God a great hand.